What's going on everybody, Llama Punch here, and today's video is going to be a little different from my usual content. Obviously, as is made very clear by my content recently, this is a gameplay and commentary slash uh, vlog channel, but that's really rare. Today's video is actually going to be an informational video for people going to Kansai Gaidai University. As was made clear by my four vlogs in Japan, I was fortunate and lucky enough to be able to have a semester abroad in Japan. I spent five months at Kansai Gaidai University in Osaka and I had an absolutely phenomenal time. When I was first applying there, I obviously couldn't find that many good videos discussing the program and the campus. So I figured I would take it into my own hands. Of course, I'm going to reiterate this in the coming video because I filmed this about, geez, three months ago, probably. Unfortunately, I wasn't able to go to some of the places that I wanted to show you guys personally. However, I will try to incorporate these into the video as best as I can. So I hope you guys enjoy the video and I'll see you guys again at the end of it. When I first applied to Kansai Gaidai, I wanted to know what it looked like. I wanted to know what I was getting myself into, the scenery, the school itself, and everything just having to do with the school. I was curious. With this curiosity, I did what anybody would do, and I went to YouTube. Now, while I was able to find some helpful videos here and there of Kansai Gaidai, uh, you know, Yui itself, the location, the area, I wasn't able to find really good concrete videos on this stuff. Mostly it'd be somebody looking around the room and then walking around and then the video would just end. As well as showing some parts of campus that are really unimportant and you're never going to have to deal with ever. So I figured that's where I need to come in. If nobody else is willing to make a super comprehensive and in-depth video on every single thing you need to know about KJU life, then I'm going to be the one to do it. So in my notes here. What we're going to be going over this video class. Get your notebooks out. Get ready. Come on. We're going to be going over the outside lobby area, mailbox location, how they work, elevator locations, floors, floor layout, the common area and the kitchen, bathrooms and showers. We're going to be looking at the training room, the cafe, um, the walk to Nakamiya, the McDonald's. McDonald's, we'll get into that the cafes on Nakamiya campus, as well as the buildings and how to locate them. And of course, the most important part, we're going to be going over the rooms themselves. Now this video is not just going to be me sitting here telling you what these things look like, where to find them. I'm actually going to go there, I'm going to record myself going there so that you know where to find them, you know what your first day is gonna be like, and you're gonna know how to locate them for the rest of your time here. Obviously, you don't need this video, it's pretty straightforward. After the first two weeks, you're going to know where everything is. But that first week, it's pretty aggravating because you want to know exactly where things are and a lot of the stuff is not going to be told to you. But that being said, I'm not going to go into the nitty gritty details of every single thing. I don't need to get into recycling. I don't need to get into a lot of the rules, a lot of the class layouts. I don't that's for the school to do. I'm not here for that. I'm here for the fun stuff. Probably the most important piece of information that everybody should know before applying here or just before you get here is that KJU is separated into two campuses. That is Gotenyama and Nakamiya. Gotenyama is where you're going to spend a lot of time. This is Yui. Yui. This is where you're going to be living if you applied for Yui living. This is where the living is, the training room, the cafeteria. It's going to be where you're spending a lot of your free time. While there are locations for classrooms as well as a library, those aren't really going to be used for you. Some people who are in higher Japanese levels are going to be in the villas on campus here. But for the most part, all of your classes are going to be on Nakamiya campus. Nakamiya campus is about a 15 minute walk from Gotenyama. Now I know that kind of sucks and it sounds really bad, but it's not that bad. Like I said, the walk does go between 15 to 20 minutes depending on how fast you walk and what shortcuts you take. The school doesn't really like shortcuts because there's a massive residential area there and uh, some people complain. I'm just, I'm, some people complain about it. Um, but that, I'm gonna leave that up to you to find those shortcuts. I'm not gonna show you any of the shortcuts except for one that's actually, you know, you can do without getting in trouble. But for the most part, the walk's gonna be 15 to 20 minutes. Like I said, that's kind of annoying when you first get here to find that out because no one had told me or my buddies that that was a thing. 
so finding out that these campuses were separated was a bit annoying. But on the bright side, you get to walk around and see a little bit of Hirakata, which is really nice, and you get to walk around a lot of local businesses and a lot of shops, and the whole walk there is pretty nice. I think that's enough of me talking here. Let's get to the next part of this video of me actually, you know, showing you the stuff that I told you I was going to show you in this video. Hamburger. Okay, the first thing I want to cover are the rooms themselves. I figured I might as well just get this out of the way because it's probably going to be the part that everyone wants to know first. The first thing to note is this. You're going to need this for later. This is your mailbox instructions. You need to know this part, this red part right here. This is your room number and your locker is going to be the same exact room number. This is going to be your code to open it. So just keep that in mind. Okay, so here to the right, we have your thermostat. If you are coming in the fall, your thermostat is likely going to be set to AC first, and then eventually as it gets colder, the school is going to change it to heat. You can't change between heat and cool by yourself. If you get in the spring, it's gonna be the opposite. It's gonna start in heat, and then around April, they're going to change it to cool. I wish that they changed it faster though, honest. Some people's are in English, some people's are in Japanese. I'm lucky mine's in English. You can um, adjust it, it's a little dodgy. Uh, settings, or I think this is settings. Oh, that's level, hold up, give me a second. That, this is like level, control the, how high it is, the swing of it. Fan, which one's settings? Gosh, I can't even remember. I just turned it off, oh there's settings. This is a control settings. Service, contact, stuff like that. You can set it on a timer. This is the back button. It's pretty simple, pretty straightforward. This is your light. I never touch this button. It says some stuff about this. Yeah, I don't care. Um, this is your light switch. That's off. That's on. This card keeps everything on. This keeps your AC on. I just put a random Disney card in there. Now if you take it out, it turns off everything. Air conditioning and your light. So. Just get a random card and keep it in there at all times. It's easier. Here we have an outlet as well as a mini storage area. You can put random things. I have everything from hats to underwear, G Fuel, laundry detergent, towels, hats, everything. In here, this very unorganized closet of mine, we have coat hang, well not, we have a coat hanging rail, um, a shelf, and then just the floor. When you get here, you are not going to have coat hangers unless you bring them. Coat hangers can be found in storage closets, which I'll show you later. It doesn't really matter what you do or how you lay out your stuff. I set up mine so my, my shirts are there, pants are on the bottom. I have my little satchel right there, and then my coat's hung up. Every single room has a drying rack. You can use this for clothes, which is what's tended. I kind of just use it for storage and uh, hanging my towel on. The bed is basically a giant wooden box with a mattress laid on top of it. These drawers are intended to be used to put luggage bags in. They're extremely roomy. As you see, I have my massive luggage bags in there, as well as some souvenirs. Here's the other one, same thing, massive. You could put clothes in these if you want. I know a lot of people who've done that. I didn't because I needed to put those bags somewhere, but you know, you can do what you want. The bed is decently comfy. I mean, I, I can't really complain about it. It's a bed, I sleep on it, you get used to it. As for the pillows, if you have a neck issue and you use a memory foam pillow, bring that with you. You are not gonna get anything close to that. The pillows that you get, I'll probably put a picture up here. It is a beanbag pillow. Um, for Westerners, that is not comfy at all. I know a lot of people who grew used to them, but um, if you want more just, just order a pillow or bring one with you. Um, that's what I suggest. It's way more comfy. I hate those stupid beanie bag pillows. These ones I got from Amazon for like a thousand yen. Now, one thing I'm going to show you, which is gonna save your guys' life, is this. As you can see, there is a massive hole in my bed. Why? Let me tell you. When you get here, you're going to be given linens, as well as a blanket. This blanket is the one that they give you, as well as this uh, comforter. The bed sheets is this white blanket, the this sheet, um, this pillow, and then a weird mat that you lay down on your bed. 
it's kind of like their replacement of like one of those things that you like strap onto your bed, but it's not strapped on. It's basically like a towel made for comfort. When you are making your bed, what you do first is you take that covering thing I was just talking about, looks like a towel, you lay it out on your bed. It doesn't strap in, which is really annoying because sometimes it does move around when you're sleeping, but you put that on first. You lay down this sheet. This sheet looks like the sheet that you put in like the middle area of your beds in the West. No, this goes on, you just tuck it in. Let me pull out a corner so you kind of get what I'm saying. See, it's just like, it's not fitted. It's just a regular sheet. Um, so you put it on, you just kind of stuff it in the corners and try to get it as tucked in as, as much as possible. This blanket, a lot of people think this is a fitted sheet. It's not. This is the fitted sheet. What you do with this is you put the comforter inside of it. You put the comforter inside of it. So many of us did not know that. Um, and what you do, it's extremely comfortable. Um, this hole goes up. Um, yeah, when we first got here, we literally went probably like three weeks not knowing what the hell the what the hell we were doing wrong. Some people like put that on and their feet were getting like stuck in it. Some people just like didn't use it at all. But um, once you do use it, it's actually really comfy. I actually really like it. It's almost a bit more convenient than a middle sheet because it doesn't like disconnect or anything. Okay, the next thing, this little drawer. Everybody gets this baby drawer thing. Um, it's pretty good for storage. I have just some random stuff in there. I keep my Genki books. All of you are gonna have this. Um, I have cup noodles. I've had these since I've gotten here. I ate my original ones, but then a kid left, so I got his. Um, I should probably eat those or throw them out, I don't know. And then masks and stuff. When I got here, the mask mandate was very strict. You were wearing a mask everywhere in classes, but now, for now, at least in the spring, um, that was dropped. Uh, however, I don't know what the future holds um, for you fall and next spring students. Yes, the most important thing, the mini fridge. A lot of videos I watched, this was like the whole point of the video was people talking about this mini fridge. The mini fridge is mini. I mean, you could kind of figure that. It's extremely small. The bottom is very narrow. The top part is actually pretty spacey. Um, you're given this door and a freezer. This freezer completely sucks. Um, you can barely freeze anything in it. Ice cream does not stay in there. It will melt. Um, I'll just save you the time of going and getting ice cream, putting it in there, eat it when you get it. I just realized that I need to remove that ice. Oh my gosh, that's a lot of ice. Eh, that's not my problem. Um, yeah, so it's not really good at freezing ice cream, but it's great at freezing everything else that you don't want to be frozen. This milk, if I leave it like that in the awkward position, which I'm just doing to kind of reserve space, it will freeze. It will freeze. However, if I put something in there, it won't. So. Um, it's really tricky. You have to play around with it. They have a dial right there that you can use to adjust. Look at that Chick-fil-A sauce. It was great. I had, a, I had that imported to me because let me tell you, when you're here for a few months, you are going to miss food back home. Everybody is given a little baby trash can. It's great. Love the little thing. Now, this chair. If you get this chair, you're lucky. You're great. Some people are not lucky or great, so they will be given a plastic chair. I may or may not have been given one and then did some sneaky stuff and was able to secure this great, lovely chair. Um, this one's comfortable. It's really great. I've been sitting here for hours and hours every single day of my life doing school and playing video games in Japan when I could have been traveling. But that's besides the point. It's very, it's very nice. Don't worry, I haven't wasted too much time playing games. I've traveled a lot. But besides the point, why am I rambling? You have two shelves right here. Random stuff. Outlets, let me talk about outlets. Before you get here, your mom's probably going to be stressing you out, talking about, oh, we gotta get outlet extensions. We have to get specific outlets um, or plugs for you to, to use any of your chargers. That's not true, especially for Apple users. Every charger, charging port, from Apple especially, is two-pronged. Guess what about Japanese outlets? They are also two-pronged. This is a Japanese outlet, it works. Some outlets um, are going to look different. They're just going to be made for two prongs. You will find those in isakayas and restaurants. 
your chargers, if you use an Apple or any other two prong charger, it is likely going to work. It's going to be a little loose when you put it in an outlet, but it works. So I wouldn't bother getting um, specific, uh, uh, what's it called, adapters for Japanese plugs. It's not worth it. I got them and I never use them. They've been sitting in this drawer ever since I got here. One suggestion I will give you though is to bring extensions. You will only be given four outlets, two there and two underneath that desk. What I did is I brought this extend extender as well as uh, this extender. Um, the extender up here, you can thread the wire through this little hole that they made for your telephone um, and you can plug it in. It's gonna make life so much easier. Bring two extenders. Two other small details. You're gonna be given a lamp. This is a lamp. It does not stand up on its own. Oh, well, prove my point wrong. Oh, didn't prove my point. If you tilt it like this, it doesn't really stand up. It kind of sucks, but I mean, it's fine. It's a lamp. I never really use it. This is your telephone. Once again, you're never really going to be using this. If you want, you can call the caretaker's office. Um, maybe in the case of being sick, the school will explain to you that whole process. Um, or you'll, if you're getting, getting a call, it's likely from the caretaker contacting you about mail that they don't know is yours or not. Besides all of that, you have these lovely shelves here, very roomy and very nice, and a vent. I don't really know that much about that vent, but it's a vent. Your window, you can open, you can close. It's very nice, very useful. As you can see, I don't have the best view, but I don't mind it. I think it gives me a very apartment feel. There's the air conditioning. I didn't point it out originally, but there it is. Um, a lot of times it's going to say it needs to be cleaned. I've never cleaned mine because I don't know how to open it. Maybe I should ask. Um, there's been stories of people getting black mold in theirs. Um, that was last semester, not this semester. Um, but I've, I'm not dead, so I assume it's fine. One thing I'm gonna call out other videos for talking about is this room. A lot of people talk about this room being too small and cramped, a cubicle. This room is extremely generous for the students. It's extremely roomy. There is, there's decent walking space. You have a nice desk, a nice chair. And I can't even, my, I don't even know if my hand, wait, let me test this. Do my hands even touch? No, I'm a six foot one dude and my arms don't even touch both the walls at the same time. You will have plenty, plenty of room here. I mean, just look at this. This is like, this is, this is nice. It's not claustrophobic, it's roomy. You can walk around here, study, and it's, it's nice. It's really homey. The one thing I will say is getting used to the mattress is a bit difficult the first two weeks. <clears throat> it's obviously not that soft. It's a very thin mattress. It's only about this thick. Probably, yeah, it's literally only that thick. Um, but after a while, you get used to it. You get used to everything here. Um, and there's nothing really to complain about in the living area. It's extremely nice, and I couldn't be happier with this bedroom. With all that being said, I think it's time to go down to the lobby. Okay, so here's the entrance area. Global Commons UV, this is the first place you're gonna see. First, I'm gonna show you this over here. Over here is the mailboxes. All your, all the room numbers of Yui listed, two rows. Combination is a regular turn, turn, um, I can start, I have groceries, bro. I don't even know what I'm doing. It's regular turn dial. You'll find out your code in here. You can peek in, you can grab stuff like that, but it's easier to just unlock it. So that's that. A lot of times you're gonna be given a slip it's gonna have four numbers and a locker number. You're gonna go over here, open it up, put the code in, turn it to open, open it, grab your package, and then turn it back in, put in the code again, and then turn it to locked. It's very simple. I don't have a package to demonstrate, but you'll figure it out pretty fast. Over here, here's the main court. We'll step up. You guys see the first Beautiful area of Yui. My floor is right there, the fourth floor up there. It's very nice, nice little area. Very beautiful. Here's the lobby. When you get here, there's gonna be tables set up. 
You're gonna use your note, your little like cards and stuff to figure out where your room is. Once you sign in, you go over here. Elevators. Yoink. An RA is gonna be taking you to your room. Once you're signed in, you're gonna need to know your student ID, I would say, memorize it before you get here or bring it with you. This is the elevator, very simple. Fourth floor, like I said, this is my floor. There's five floors, fifth floor. Here's where we get to the nitty gritty. The sectioning off of everything. As you can see, this is how it's laid out. Um, this section is boy section, this section is the girl section. Five levels. Um, you're either going to be in one of the sections. Um, they separate it by color. Yellow, orange, we're red. So this is where I am. Okay, definitely not filming this like a few days later, but this is what you're going to see when you first enter. Each unit has two kitchens, I'm pretty sure. At least ours does. Ours does, whoopsies. We have a balcony overlooking campus. I'd say we have one of the best spots here. Here's our kitchen that we usually use. Not the cleanest right now. Um, not my fault though, I won't take blame. But you got two stoves, you got fish ovens, which can use, be used as broilers. Um, you're given pots and pans. You don't gotta worry about bringing your own. Um, usually they're kept under here. Um, you know, plates and stuff. All the plates are kind of out currently, so they're not in there, but usually they go under there. Um, each one of these cabinets has a room number. You gotta find yours, and then you gotta put stuff in here. I have all my stuff in there. A lot of stuff which I'm gonna have to either cook or throw away because I leave in um, about two days. So, gonna have to figure that out. To turn on these, you hold down this button. It turns on. You pick the stove top you want, turn it on, click this button, and then click that. You can turn it down, turn it up. If nothing's on it, it starts blinking. Turn it off, off. So, very cool. Um, here are the trash cans, glass, cans and bottles, unburnable, and paper. Um, I think I already talked about bottles. Bottles, you usually are supposed to take off the wrapper, throw the wrapper in unburnable, throw the bottle there. Um, you don't have to if you don't wanna. That's just kinda how people work. If we go back over here, we have the storage closet. Usually you can find um, coat hangers in here sometimes. People will leave them. Um, people keep like luggage and boxes. Um, the vacuum's in here. I have a luggage bag in here. Um, and yeah, just kind of storage closet. This is where you find the vacuum. So that's cool. Here you get the first view of the common area. Like I said before, we have this really cool porch. But let's look at the laundry real quick. Laundry's over here. Uh, like I said, every unit's different. I don't know where your laundry's gonna be, but you'll probably see a little sign that says laundry. The dryers, three dryers on top, three washers on the bottom. It costs 200 yen. It only takes 100s. Um, just throw your clothes in, throw your detergent in, close it and put two coins in. It'll take 31 minutes, like most washers. These are the dryers. Um, as you can see, there's no lint trap. This is the lint trap. It's kind of hard to tell. When I first got here, people said there's no lint trap. This is the lint trap. You can see it's this weird disc thing. You have to open. It's kind of awkward. You grab this part right here. Sorry. Open it up. As you can see, no one cleaned this one yet. You take that off. You clean it. Throw it away. Um, put it back on. And then push it back on. With these, these only cost 100 yen to use. They take 60 minutes. They're not good at all. They're not good at drying clothes. So usually do two washes, um, not two washes, two, two drying cycles. Um, so 200 yen. And then, um, you know, if you don't wanna do that, just put it on the uh, drying rack in your room. Walking through this door, we have the showers over there, the bathroom right here. Um, in this floor, this kind of layout, ours are separated. Sometimes they're not always separated, but here's the bathroom. Three beautiful sinks, five stalls, uh, storage closet at the back you don't get access to. Um, here's the toilet, seats are heated, uh, you know, flush, bidet, shower, um, stop. Uh, it plays music, birds chirping, pretty cool. Strength of the bidet, toilets are great. Going this way. 
past the common area that is in shambles because everyone's moving out. So there's a lot of store, like extra stuff for people to take and it's very dirty. Um, but this is the common room. You have little tables, it's great, it's awesome. Little trash cans. Here are the showers. Once again, you got four sinks. And then you have the actual showers themselves. Now this is where things get a little silly, things get a little goofy, okay? There's the light. Here's a shower. You have a little curtain right here. You can get unchanged here, put all your stuff there. Little basket to put stuff, keep it clean. Is it? See if it's dry. Uh, so this is the shower. Um, <laughs> being here for the first time, I was like, what in the Sam hell is this? You have these three shelves um, and you got a mirror. Here's the actual shower head itself. It's pretty small, but you can move it. Most showers in Japan, these are connected type things so you can move around. A light, a vent. Um, and then yeah, obviously the drain. I, I don't know why I'm describing that. This is what we need to talk about, okay? The way that this works is this adjusts heat, right? And this is a button you press down and you have anywhere from five to 15 seconds of water running, okay? Let me just show you this, let me just show you this. Ready? And... Oh, this one's running long today, okay. Did it get stuck? It usually doesn't run this long. Oh, there it is. But you can see it's temporary. Yeah, so you're gonna have to do that a lot. It's extremely aggravating. Um, each shower is different. Some of the pressures are really good. Some of the pressures are absolutely horrendous. Um, sometimes they they literally, this will ricochet back because of all the pressure. And sometimes it's weak. This is shower number two. So this one's pretty weak. I usually use this one because it's either extremely weak water pressure or extremely harsh water pressure. Yeah, so that's annoying. Also, some of them, when you turn it to cold, it gets really weak. Um, and when you turn it to hot, it gets really strong. So yeah, that's the showers. Very interesting. Not too bad though. Pretty private. Also, there's a store here. Let me turn the light back on. Here's the door. You can shut it when you're in there and lock it. Pretty sick. Whoa, we teleport to my room. As you can see, I am currently packing up. I am leaving tomorrow at like 8 a.m. And uh, while I would like to show you guys the training room and the cafeteria location at Gotenyama, as well as all the stuff to do with Nakamiya, um, I do not have the time to actually go there in, uh, you know, by myself and go film around. But I think that's actually good for you guys. I think it's gonna be cool for you guys to see Nakamiya for the first time. It's also a good thing for this video because I have to show you guys this stuff on Google Maps and it'll just be a lot easier to do on my home PC. Um, so, I, I mean, it's nowhere, nowhere here, but. Oh, oh, what the? Oh, there it is. Oh, look at this. Where are we? We're on Google Earth. Okay, so because I wasn't able to show you guys in person what um, it was like walking to the campus, we're gonna go Yotenyama. Okay, so here we go. So this, is right where you guys are gonna be. Gotenyama Minami Machi. Okay, so here we are at Kansai Gaidai University Gotenyama campus. These right here are the UE buildings. This is where you guys are going to be living. These are the villas I was talking about earlier. And here is the courtyard. So when you're leaving for class, let's watch the cursor. Okay, let's watch the cursor. You're gonna be walking out of here going down this hall, going down this hall, and then maybe walking through the front here and walking past the fountain and leaving over here. From there, you're gonna be walking down this sidewalk. Either side is fine, left or right. I usually went down this. And as you get to this corner, there is a little Lawson's right here. But once you get to this corner, you go down this way. And going down this street, some ways, you arrive to building six of the Nakamiya campus. This is the newest building on campus. It's really nice. I had my cooking class right here in one of the little uh, cooking labs. If you're lucky, you'll have some classes here. So you only have to walk this far and then you'll get to your class. But for most people, especially everybody who's taking Japanese, which is everybody who's going, 
has to keep going down until they get to the front gates of Nakamiya right here. From there, usually your classes, you're going to be walking down this way until you get to this building. I think this was building three, if I remember correctly. And in here, you'll see what it is. It's basically four floors, and, or maybe five floors, and you know, your classes will be in here. Most international classes stay within this building. Now, when I first got there, over here, right in the back of this building, so kind of like in this corner, there was a McDonald's, and it was great. I ate so much McDonald's, which probably wasn't good for me, but I ate a lot of McDonald's. Me and my friends would go there every other day for lunch. We'd get McDonald's right here. Uh, sadly, McDonald's is closed. It's gone. I think it's going to become a KFC, and I'm just warning you, if you don't like KFC in the States, you are going to despise it in Japan. So, yeah, no more McDonald's. Very sad. But yeah, that's the walk. And it's it's it looks worse than it is. This, like I said, takes about 17 minutes if you're walking fast enough. Ignore my dogs just barking in the back. Now, one of those um, shortcuts, you know, we can't speak too loudly um, that I would take is I would go right here and I turn into this area. Now, sometimes I would walk through this parking lot onto this path and then down here and end up here and then just walk down to campus. But what I started doing, which I thought it was a little faster, it was walking up here, going down this lane, and just walking straight through this playground, and then continuing on my way to class. Um, there's a few other shortcuts that people found, but like I said, the school frowns down upon that, and if you're caught walking that way, they're likely going to have a little chat with you. One more thing I want to show you guys, just to help you guys out is show you the nearest train station to Gotenyama. So when you're leaving campus, usually going to the train station, you're gonna walk out of this area. There's a little walkway right here. This is the uh, officer's office. So you walk out of here and you go down this street. There is a um, there is a Welshia, which is a grocery store, right in this building. But if you keep going down all the way, you get to this big hill. You go down this hill all the way and right here is the train station and this is uh gotenyama station and right here is a very good okonomiyaki and takiyaki and uh soba noodle place it is super good um and also the mall which i highly suggest going to if you go this way is right here at kusuha mall this is the second stop after you get on the train station the first place is Makino, which is right here, and then Kusuha Mall. Kusuha Mall is absolutely awesome. It's massive. There is amazing restaurants in the restaurant district of the area, which is about in this, this area, this general area right here. It is so good. I loved that mall and I really miss it. Also, there's a big golf course over here I never went to. Some additional things to know about Gotenyama campus, the cafeteria when looking at it from this aerial view. Um, the cafeteria is right here. This is the cafeteria. It's really good when it's not busy. At dinner time, the only people who are eating there are residential students, but at lunchtime it gets packed with students from all over um, the Osaka region who are, go to college at Kansagare. So it's going to be packed at lunchtime. So I'm just warning you guys, this whole area is packed with students at lunchtime. So uh, I'd plan ahead when you're getting lunch. I highly suggest the miso ramen and the curry udon and the curry ramen all that's very good so yeah that's about what i wanted to show you guys here um the campus is absolutely gorgeous i can't wait for you guys to experience it for yourselves yeah so time to transport it back to real life llama okay guys i think that's gonna be the video while i wanted to show you guys more about what it's like living at kgu I just simply didn't have enough time and wasn't able to make it happen. Like I said earlier, maybe that's kind of a good thing. After all, this is your adventure that you're going on. And I think it'll be good for you guys to find this, some of this stuff that I didn't show on your own. While traveling abroad for a semester is pretty horrifying and challenging, I can confirm to you guys that it is 100% worth it. And I hope that it is an amazing experience for all of you. And I hope you guys are able to bring back not just memories, but also super cool knickknacks, just like this amazing huggy-wuggy that I got from underneath Tokyo Tower. 
What a great purchase. Now, before I go, I forgot to tell you guys about the training room. Now, while I can't really find any videos of the training room that actually show it off or any pictures, what I will tell you is this. If you like weightlifting, you are out of luck. The closest gym to Gotenyama is about a 45 minute walk or a basically like a 20 minute bus ride. If you are one of the people that buy a bike while you're there on campus, then I guess that's easier for you. But for everybody else, you're kind of out of luck. If I need to give you a picture of what the training room looks like, imagine a really big room with five treadmills, two different types of stationary bikes, a pull-up bar that you can do pull-ups, dips, and other things on, two pound weights, some mats, like four ping pong tables in the very back, as well as a platform to do inclined sit-ups on. Oh, and of course, the most important part, a bicep curl machine. That's the training room. If you can picture that in your head, that's it. You have to go to the caretaker and get a card. You have to like give them your room key and then they give you a card and then you use that to get into the training room. And then after you're done, you come back and then you get your card and you give them that and then you have to like sign out. It's pretty dumb. But yeah, that's basically the training room. So if you like working out um, that doesn't involve cardio, then I am very sorry. However, for you runners, you're going to be doing great. So I just want to thank you guys so much for watching this video. I hope that it was able to prepare you slightly for living on campus at KGU. And I hope that each one of you just has an absolutely amazing experience like I did. It's a great school with great teachers and great people. So with all that being said, I bid you all good luck. And yeah, until the next one. Hasta pronto.